Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me turn things over to Emma. And Emma, I guess everybody knows everybody else, but uh, for the benefit of our audience in Brisbane, um, why don't you have everybody <laughs> introduce themselves and take it away? Oh, okay. Um, I'm Emma and I'm from Melbourne. That's really all that's interesting about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to run down the cast list as it appears? So. Oh, I'm doing stage directions. Cool. All right. Um, I'm Rose, I'm Ashley, and I'm from Melbourne. I'm Bianca, and I'm playing Lily, and I'm also from the Melbourne. Um, from I'm, that Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> I'm Matthew, and I'm playing Sydney, and I'm also from the Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm John. I'm playing Lord Havelot, um, who will sound awfully close to Stephen Fry at times. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I am also from the Melbourne, but specifically the Baronia of the Melbourne. Oh, oh very fancy. I don't know if you should specify that. No one. Well, really you know. <laughs> <laughs> also, John, surely put a bit of Brian Breath Blessed in there. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's really yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> that very supercilious sort of well, I just well, what, yeah. what, what yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, well, I'm Georgia. I'll be reading for Calliope. I think that's how you say it. Um, and I'm from Melbourne too. So, bunch of Melbournians people here represent. That's right. Squad. Yeah. Okay. So please don't judge our accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like opening on accents. Okay, let's see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't sure. Like, I'm all about not doing amateur accents. That's just that's a pet peeve of mine. However, we're just having some fun, so I'll yeah, give it a try. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. You no, should I'm... know the accent anyway. You should have this character already done. Should I? I've been yeah. myself Hard. for too long. <laughs> Ashley, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Should we get started? Let's do it. All right. Uh, time and place, Victorian England. Two orphan teenagers, sisters, are sitting on a stoop somewhere in London. They wear ragged clothing. Rose is the older, always coming up with ideas which may or may not be practical. Lily is the younger, more sceptical, more practical one, but differential to her older sister. I didn't even know you could get kicked out of a workhouse. Seems kind of a contradiction in terms. Don't you think? I think it might have had to do with the with you trying to unionise the orphans. I wasn't trying. I was doing a pretty good job at it. I think that might have been a problem. Besides, it was a perfectly practical solution. Give the lads more gin, they'll work more happily. <laughs> happily? Probably not harder. <laughs> the lads seemed pretty happy about it. The lads were happy because you spiked everybody's drinks at dinner time. Well, that's what they get for putting me to work in the kitchen. Yeah, well, now we're not working anywhere. We're too old to go back to the orphanage. We got kicked out of there too, as I recall. Not our fault, they weren't very patriotic. You tried to set fire to the headmistress. It was Guy Fawkes Day, and I was seven. Sorry if I didn't have a fully formed notion of how to properly celebrate treason. <laughs> <sighs> Guess we're just going to have to fend for ourselves now. Two orphan sisters, all alone in a cold, cruel world. No family, no connection, no marketable skills in a time of great economic transition. I don't much like the sound of that, do you? Which part? The noun, the verb, or the adjectives? You've been spending entirely too much time in the library, Lily. You were the one who said pen is mightier than a sword. Of course, now that I mention it, that was in the context of you stabbing that fellow in the neck with a quill pen. He was trying to steal my gin. I think I organised the lads a little too well, if you ask me. So now what do we do? Two pretty young working class orphan girls in London, with no home, no one to take us in, no way to earn an honest living. I think there's only one thing we can do. What? No, no, not that. You don't mean that, do you? We pursue a life of crime. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you meant, wait, wait a life of crime? Maybe not a whole life. Maybe just until we make enough to retire. If we're really good at it, maybe we can get ourselves a castle. A castle? Don't be ridiculous. Think of the upkeep. Oh, we'll have to 
servants do all that. Servants, you say? I'm planning to be very successful. You also plan to run away and join the circus. I would have been a very good lion tamer if only they'd let me practice. I tell you, that orphanage did not have a very good vocational program. You were catching alley cats and stuffing them in bird cages. Well, that's better than stuffing them into meat pies, because I guarantee you that's what the shop down the street was doing with them. Just because you found a hair in yours once doesn't mean that it was made of cat, although I'll admit the name Nine Lives Meat Pies and Guitar Strings did always seem a bit curious. So it's settled in. A life of crime it is. I suppose. What kind of crime? Oh, don't know. Fraud. Deceit. Trickery. That sort of thing. Oh, so you mean we stand for Prime Minister? Or Parliament, sorry. <laughs> Don't be silly. You have to be a man to vote. There is that. Besides, this doesn't look like a year, a good year for the Whigs anyway. We're Whigs? Mostly, we're just orphan girls down in our luck, in need of a break. You know, if life were like one of those novels by Charles Dickens, some secret benefactor would come along right now and adopt us and turn us into ladies in waiting. Ladies waiting for what? Oh, I don't know. The theatre? The racetrack, the Henley Regatta, whatever it is, ladies do. A handsome prince on a white horse. We could take bets at the Ascot. Five to one says the handsome prince never shows. Two to one says if we did that, we wouldn't be considered ladies anymore either. No, but we might be rich. So, how does someone get to be a lady anyway? You have to be born that way. We were born girls. Can't we become ladies? Somebody a long time ago had to lop off, lop off somebody's head. That doesn't sound very ladylike. I don't think it was the ladies doing the lopping. Although, if I'd been around back then, a horse, a horse, the, my kingdom for a horse. There's that, um, there's the king at the Bosworth Field. And then I'd have ridden in on the horse and just, and just stole and lop this one off, lop that one off, lop off the whole lot of them. Next thing you know, I'd have been a lady, or a lord, however that works. If you'd have been around back then, you'd have been put to work cleaning the stables, or maybe put in the stocks for stealing the horse, or drawn and quartered for picking the wrong side. You're just a real font of inspiration, aren't you? I'm just trying to be practical. And I'm just trying to keep us out of debtors' prison. Or Australia. We definitely don't want them to send us to Australia. I hear they have 1,000 of kinds of different spiders there, and they all want to kill you. Only the big ones. The ones that are the size of crocodiles. They can stand up on their hind legs and box with the other six. Oh! Besides, I think you have to commit a crime before they send you to Australia. You were the one who said we were going to pursue a life of crime. Successful crime. Big difference. So, what's the plan? The plan is to come up with a plan. So what you're saying is, right now, you don't have a plan? Right now, we're in a sort of pre-planning stage. So, if it's pre-planning, that means it's before the plan, which means there isn't a plan, right? It means maybe something will come up. Like a storm? I feel like the wind's picking up. Newspaper blows in. Rose picks it up and reads it. Or it's newspaper. I don't think now is the time to be reading up on the latest dispatch from Pago Pago. So look at this. A housewife in North Finchley has grown a potato in the shape of... Oh, maybe I shouldn't read that one aloud. <laughs> hey! Is another one. A farmer in Upper Moldingham on Cheekies has a three-legged pig that he tames and grunts to the tune of Rule Britannia. Why only three legs? He says a pig that patriotic couldn't be eaten all at once. What does any of that have to do with solving our little predicament? Nothing. It's just interesting. Oh, look. Here's one that says... Uh, Lily grabs newspaper from Rose. Give me that! Hey, I was reading that. We don't need a singing pig. Grunting. It was a grunting pig. And with just three legs. And we don't need a potato shaped like, well, whatever it was. It says it was shaped like, that's enough. 
we don't need pigs or potatoes or anything else. We need jobs. Jobs sounds so boring. Living out on the street sounds pretty exciting, but I don't want to try that. So, what they got? Let's see. The City of London is now taking applications for the position of... Ooh, that sounds good. A government job. We won't have to get our hands dirty there. Professional rat catcher. Okay, perhaps there are a few examples. Wonder what they do with all the rats. Says here you're free to sell them to gamblers who put them put on rat fights. Ooh, on the other hand, no, we wouldn't just be gamblers; we'd be sport promoters. No, and you probably don't have to pay the rats, so it's all profit. I said no. You're always so negative. <sighs> so what else is there? Not much. Let's see. Here's a doctor looking to hire some leech collectors. Uh, probably not our thing. But I suppose it could be in a pinch. Yes, it's in a pinch. I got it. Probably not as lucrative as being a promoter of rodent wrestling. Then there's one for a bug crank. What's a bug crank? Oh, they collect the dead, dead bugs from the streetlights. Okay, no. Do all the jobs there involve rats and bugs and leeches? Here's one mucking around in the sewers for looking for valuables. Rose and Lily look at each other. Ew! Ew! <laughs> Nothing else? Nothing else we're qualified for. Oh, qualifications are overrated. Maybe we should look again at that standing for parliament thing. Otherwise... It's just butlers and handyman and some lord looking for a governess for his daughter. Well, we're definitely not any of the... Wait, did you say governess? Yeah, why? Let me see that. Rose takes the newspaper back. Like I said, though, we aren't qualified. <clears throat> Minor but respectful country, noblemen seek governess to instruct niece in the customary fields of education and social graces. Inquire Lord Havelock, Weebly Manor. See, what did I tell you? That's it. That's what? That's what we do. What's what we do? The leech thing or the rat thing? Because no way am I going down in sewers. Or Parliament. Not that you have to really tell the difference between the two. We become governesses. <laughs> Don't be silly. Don't be silly. We're not governesses. Lord Havlet doesn't know that. I think it's pretty obvious when we show up like this. We don't show up like this. How do we show up then? I don't know. We'll steal some better clothes. I don't know anything about being governesses. We don't even know much about anything, really. That's not true. We know how to peel potatoes. Hey, we could even peel one in the shape of... I don't think that is what they mean by social graces. Well, what do you think they mean, then? I... They mean things like drawing and using a sewing needle. I gave somebody a tattoo once. Does that count? Being able to carry on a conversation in polite society. I know 24 different swear words. Polite society. Where we're from, that is polite society. And we certainly don't know anything about the customary fields of education. No, we do. Picking pockets is pretty customary for an orphan. It's even in Oliver Twist. Maybe someday they'll make a musical about it. People will pay lots of money for a heartwarming tale about poverty, as long as they don't actually have to live it. Let's look again at the leech collecting one. That sounds better than the rats. Nonsense. You just need to use your imagination. I am. I'm imagining us living, sleeping out on the streets and going hungry. Not that imagination. Your entre entrepreneurial imagination. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we need to find a clothesline. Why a clothesline? So we can wear nice clothes when we arrive at Weebly Manor. Come on, hey! Hey! Rose grabs Lily and they exit. Scene two, Dweebly Manor. <clears throat> the maid enters, dusting things up and tidying up. She is perpetually in a bad mood. This is Augusta. She alternates between dour practicality and flights of fancy. Just, just, just. I don't know what the point of any of this is. It's not like I'm removing the dust. I'm just moving it around. 
But the master says he wants the place dusted, so I dust. I dust it off from here, and it floats up into the air, and then it all comes back down again over there. I feel like Sisyphus pushing the rock uphill, except I have thousands upon thousands of little rocks all spinning around like little snowflakes. I hate snow. Oh well, I guess it's a guarantee of employment. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I wonder if it's possible to tell the difference. Hello, Aunt Millie. You're looking rather fine today. Uh, if you were a little less fine, I could sweep you up and put you in the rubbish bin along with Uncle when Augusta reaches a certain spot in the room, she has her back turned to the rest of the stage. That's when Lord Havelock jumps out. He is dressed as if he's on safari and mimics having a gun. Bang! And down goes the great elephant! Ah! Ooh! He nearly scared me to death! Ah, if you'd been a great elephant, I'd have shot you completely to death. 100% mortality. I hate it when you do that. No, yeah, so does the great elephant, I assume. <laughs> I'm not an elephant. Oh, a rhinoceros then. Or a hippopotamus. Which is the one with the horn? Well, it's certainly not me. I've stalked a great beast all the way across the savannah, and now it is time to claim my prize. You've snuck up on me in the drawing room. I think I'm going to put the trophy right over there. Ah. Lovely. One more useless thing to dust off. That, the elephant there, the rhino there, uh, all the hippopotamus, whichever one has the horn. I think the lion over there and the tigers on that wall there. No, 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 wait, wait. The ones with the horns should be facing one another. So which one is it again that has the horns? Tusks. I beg your pardon. Elephants have tusks. They don't have horns. Tusks? That's right. Those white pointy things. The very same. Those aren't horns. They look like horns, but they're called tusks. Ah, uh, well, do rhinos have tusks? Or hippos? Well, whichever one of those that has the white pointy thing. Ah. It's the rhino, and it has a horn. Just like a big brass band. My God, Africa is mysterious. It's <laughs> not the only thing. Zebras, uh, are they still the ones with the uh, stripes? As far as I know. And giraffes, still the ones with the long necks? Until you kill, kill them and cut them off. Capital idea. Yes, I was afraid I was going to have to raise the ceiling. Eh. You'd have to raise some capital for that first. Yes, 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 yes. Now that is the problem now, isn't it? Oh, things were much easier in the old days, weren't they? If the Lord of the Manor needed money, he just sent out his heralds to tell the peasants and they gave it to him. I doubt if it was willingly. Now the peasants have got all these strange notions about having rights and that sort of thing. You're not even supposed to call them peasants either. You're supposed to call them the working class. I blame those Americans. Ghastly people. Yeah. Would those ghastly people be the Americans or the working classes? Both. Ungrateful little snipes, if you ask me. They go on and on and on about their right to do this, their right to do that. Yeah, well, what about my right to live a life of luxury due to my hereditary position? Can't very well have an upper class if the lower classes go around demanding their rights, now can we? If people wanted rights, they should have been born into a better class. Ah. Speaking of rights, do you think I'll be paid any time soon, sir? Ah, right. Paid. Ah, uh, about that. Yes, about that. Well, you understand the situation with my dear Calipi. Here we go. All I need to do is find some suitable bachelor to propose a holy matrimony to my lovely niece before she turns 21. 
and then I can inherit my late brother's not exactly insignificant estate. And then you can pay me? Uh, then I can go off to Africa and hunt the great wild beast on the plains, the baboons in the jungle, the leopards, the cheetahs, the water buffalo, buff buffaloes, the, the Thompson's gazelle bounding gracefully through the tall grass, all the magnificent animals that the Lord in all of his glory has seen fit to put on that wild continent so that Englishmen of the proper social strata can hunt them down for sport. And that is how I shall squander away my time and my inheritance. But you'll pay me first, right? Creditors. Oh, why are they all so single-minded? At least we have a mind. What, 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 what was that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just rearranging the dust and reflecting on the futility of life and the eternal dream of a tall, dark, handsome stranger who will come to take me away from all of this. Either that or the prospect of a peasant uprising, which seems decidedly more likely. So, uh, as you can see, Augusta, all will be well soon. Uh, you will have your wages and uh, I'll have my safari. Hmm. So, when exactly is this mysterious Prince Charming supposed to come along and sweep Miss Calliope off her feet? Ah, yes, that, well, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm work, working on that, yes. I'm yeah. working on it. In the same way that you're working on your marksmanship by hiding behind the credenza and shouting boo at the help? The very same. Why, when I put my mind to something, I move with electricity. Or is it electricity? Has electricity even been invented yet? Oh, heaven help us all. So what exactly have you done? I have put an advertisement in the Times. <laughs> You're advertising your nurse, your niece for sale in the newspaper? Well, of course not. Goodness me, that would be so very uh, middle class. <clears throat> A designation to which some of us can only aspire. I have advertised for a governess. Someone to teach young uh, Calliope the finer points of being a lady. Instruct her in the social graces. Polish her in the ways expected of someone in her social station. Give her a makeover so you can pawn her off on some unsuspecting gentleman desperate for a bride. Oh God, yes. Do oh, you think there's any hope at all? Considering that the last governess you hired was, um, uh, was last spotted running down the road in her night dress, screaming like a banshee, um, very little. Oh, she just didn't understand Calliope's wry sense of humor. Calliope put a snake in her bed. Merely taking to heart her instruction in the natural sciences, I'm sure. She is quite an attentive student, I hear. The governor before, governess before that didn't even last a day. She was too quick to judge. She wouldn't have worked out anyway. Calliope set her hair on fire. Well, that, 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 that was an accident. That, that's what I told that nosy police inspector who came around. It was an accident. Calliope merely tripped with the candle, that's all. The fact that the governess was tied up with a rope at the time might have been a clue to a certain premeditation. Look, whose side are you on here anyway, Augusta? Don't look at me. I don't want to get on that girl's bad side. I rather like my hair the way it is, unburnt. Yes, well, I, I think Calliope was merely expressing her disinterest in piano lessons. Eh? She just had an unusual way of expressing her feelings. Oh, I think she expressed her feelings pretty clearly with the governess before that, when she mixed up a vat of glue and put them on the piano keys so the instructor's fingers would get stuck. Oh, I miss that horse too. So, so I mean, music isn't her calling. We, we learn and we move on. Just like all the governesses have moved on too. Well, it, perhaps the times will send us a whole new crop to choose from, eh? <laughs> like lambs to the slaughter. We just need to keep a stiff upper lip. 
and a cricket bat by the door in case the girl becomes homicidal. Oh, I do hope that times can turn up some suitable applicants. I mean, I'd hate to reduce to advertising in one of the other papers. Because they're not as respectable as the times. Because the advertising rates are practically user usurious. Can you believe they require payment in advance? In cash! <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody ran a credit check. Time is of the essence. The great herds won't last forever. I don't want them all thinned out by the time I finally get there. Speaking of time, what was that you said about, you said there about how if Calliope gets married before she's 21, you inherit your brother's estate? Oh, yes. Yes, poor bloke. is done in by drink. Oh, so he drank himself to death? Oh, oh, heavens no. Oh, he never touched a drop. No, no, until he fell into a vat of that 90 proof while touring a distillery in Scotland. I mean, who knew that uh, tourism could be so dangerous? I'll never forget his last dying words as they tried to rescue him. They tried to pull him out and all he could say was, let go of me, you fools, let go of me. He then took a big gulp and went under. I think he knew that it was his time. Probably what poor Calliope is, so. Crazy. Emotional. Disturbed. High strung. Just plain loony if you ask me. Well, the poor girl was Probably traumatized. The only people traumatized are the ones who have to deal with her. Well, well, I mean, well, yes, yes, she can be a bit challenging. I'm sure that's what the lion tamer with the circus said, too. Moments before the lion ate him. But there's a circus. Oh, I do love a good circus. It's a metaphor. Oh, the acrobats, the trapeze. The seals that balance the balls on their nose. You'd think that they were born with that talent, or do you think they have to learn it? I mean, hmm, I wonder what Mr. Darwin would say about that. I think he'd say that survival of the fittest th theory might have some holes in it. Oh, oh, and the elephants. Oh, standing up there on those little platforms. First time I ever saw that, you know, the grace, the athleticism, the sheer intelligence of the animal. I thought, Oh, well, oh, someday I must travel to Africa to see one of these fine beasts in its native habitat and shoot it. Remind me not to stand on a chair when you're around then. Oh, oh, oh you don't have anything to worry about. No, oh, you wouldn't look very good on a wall. <laughs> not sure how I should take that. Oh, sitting down, most likely. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to get hurt in the job now, would we? <laughs> you never answered my question, though. Well, uh, well, what question was that? So what happens if Calliope isn't married by age 21? What happens to your inheritance then? Ah, that. Ah, well, uh, well by 21, seeing as how she'll practically be an old maid by then. <laughs> yes. Well, in that case, it all goes to Calliope to support her during her dotage, all right? And you are left with... Memories of my dear departed brother. And also my unpaid bills. Well, Calliope... Probably travels the world in style, inflicting a unique charm on everyone she meets. All the while supported by a substantial estate. Yes. Substantial. Quite substantial, in fact. So that's why you're so eager to marry her off? Yes, the sooner the better. You get paid, we get the little hellion out of from underfoot, and I can go off to Africa and kill large, innocent, exotic animals to put on my walls. So you see, everyone would wind up better off. Except perhaps the elephants. No, oh, no. Oh. No, I assure you, I will employ only the finest taxidermists. And her husband. Ah, caveat emptor. Buyer beware. So, does Calliope realize that if she holds out, she stands to inherit father's estate? Oh, the poor girl's mental. I doubt she realizes what day it is sometimes. 
which is why it's imperative that I find her. A doctor? A governess. Someone to shape her up. Make her presentable. Marketable. Yes. You make her sound like livestock at the fair. Oh, quite the contrary, quite the contrary. You could get good money for a prize stallion. Uh, I'll have to pay a dowry to marry off Calliope. Oh, I just hope it's not too much. Uh, I'd hate to have to ride steerage on the steamer down the Nile. I see. I guess Dr. Freud won't be getting a new patient after all. Well, I do hope the governor shows up soon. The elephants can't wait to be shot, eh? Uh, actually, a little more concerned about the creditors. Uh, oh, I wish I could shoot a few of those. Yeah, I wonder how they'd look up on the wall. Have I ever told you how much some of those bankers resemble a snarling hyena? So, just how long has it been since you placed this advertisement in the Times? Five weeks. Five weeks? And you've had no responses? Uh, you don't think people missed it, do you? Not distracted by the latest horror that the press has sensationalized? Horror on Gower Street, horror in East Anglia, horror in the Punjab. Have you ever noticed that they're all horrors now? I'm thinking people are probably getting wise to the horror from Dweebly Manor. Ah, yes, I was afraid of that. Yes. People do tend to talk. And Calliope does give them quite a bit to talk about. I really should consider making the next governess sign a non-disclosure agreement. I'm afraid the only governess you're going to be able to find for that creature upstairs is someone so unqualified, so preposterously naive, so ridiculously unsuited for the position that she is unable to find honest employment elsewhere. The doorbell rings. I'll get the door. Right. I'll go back to practice tracking the great beasts. <laughs> Perhaps it's the postman delivering that new book I ordered. I told the bookseller to send me something scandalous, something forbidden, something that will stir my passions. Goodness knows that's probably cl as close as I'll ever get to the real thing. Lord Havelock starts moving towards the exit, acting, acting out his hunting technique. First... I camouflage myself in the native colors of the plain. And then I secrete myself in the bush beside their favorite watering home. Then I come upon them stealthily. And then when they least expect it, go ahead, the crocodile, the crocodile's got my leg. It's pulling me under the water. It's pulling, it's, oh, oh no, 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 never mind. Just the chair. <sighs> Lord exits. August opens the door. Rose and Lily are standing there dressed in nice clothes. You're not the postman. Hello. We're here to apply for the position of governor. Oh, praise the Lord. Rose and Lily look at each other perplexed. Oh, all right then, if it's required. Um, <clears throat> the Lord of Dweebly Manor is a really well guy. Just well this. World renowned for his selfliness. In fact, isn't that right, Louis? Uh, sure, he's the very Sultan of Swell. Oh, the Sultan of Swell, that's good, I like that. Um, <laughs> the Sultan of Swell, the Shrike of Swell, the Suzerain of Swell, the most noble, generous, kind, soft part of sovereign of Swell the world has ever seen. Oh, um, um, I lost my spot. God help you, you may just qualify. Come on in, I'll fetch Lord Havelot. Augusta exits. I don't think that's what she meant by praise the Lord. You know how these noblemen are. They are very insecure lot. They need a lot of self-validation. Always trying to live up to the reputation of a medieval ancestor who was handy with a sword. Rose acts out a knight wielding a sword in battle. Swish, swish. That's how you got made a knight. Well, that and being on the winning side. Now you have to, you just have to show up. Bad for the psyche. That is anxiety. Are you sure this is a good idea? Confidence, Lily. Self-confidence. 
I'm pretty confident this is a bad idea. Well, at least we got some new clothes out of it. That's true. Too bad we won't find shoes to match. Lily lifts up her dress to reveal farmer's work boots. Rose looks around the room in wonder and awe. Look at all the stuff here. Think how much we could fit under these skirts when we make our getaway. Better start now because I don't think we could, I can run very fast in these. Probably best to go for the silverware. Small but valuable in the black market. Just make sure you don't rattle too much. I don't think I have any pockets. You have to stuff them down your, you know. Oh! Be careful with the forks. Rose inspects the candlestick. She blows out the flame. This might come in handy. She sticks the candlestick holder down her dress. Oh, hot, hot, hot! Oh. Augusta <laughs> enters, followed by Lord Havelot. <laughs> May I present the Vice Count of Dwibley, Lord Havelot. Hi there, Lord. I think we're supposed to catch you here. Right, forgetting my manners. Rose gives a deep curtsy in which the candlestick falls out. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Is that a candlestick? I like to be prepared. You never know when the lights might go out and you'll need one. By Jove, that's just the kind of forward thinking that we need around here. Ah. It also looks like one of ours. Well, exquisite taste then. We don't want to hire just some commoner off the street now, do we? Ah. Technically, if someone isn't of the nobility, they're a commoner. Who? Oh, we're not commoners. We're not? I mean, we're not? We're quite rare. Right, so which one of you two is applying for the role of governess? I am. I am. I am. We both are. Yep, we both are. So, you're in competition then? Oh. Oh, how rather unfortunate for one of you, because I'm only in need of one governess. This is my servant. <laughs> sister. She's like a sister to me. I'd better be. But she's still my servant. I am not your... Rose elbows Lily. She's more of an associate, really. So which is it? Sister or servant? Because quite frankly, I've never heard of a governess with a servant. That would be like a... Well, a servant with a servant. Now, that seems quite irregular. I mean, don't you think it's irregular? I think Miss Calliope is pretty irregular myself. Well, yes, that's true. Besides, it might take two of them to hold her down. Oh, that's also true. Mm. Excuse me, did you say hold down? You know, as in hold down a position. No, I mean hold her down. You know, like this. Augusta demonstrates on Lily, grabbing her and putting her in some kind of hold. Hey, what are you doing? Ouch, that hurt! If it didn't hurt, it wouldn't be affected now, would it? <laughs> yeah, so, Calliope can be quite the little tiger sometimes. <laughs> oh, she's a high-spirited sort of girl. <laughs> she's a holy terror, if you ask me, but let's not let, let get on too much about that. Augusta releases her hold on Lily. You can go now, dearie. What was all that? I believe it's called a half Nelson, in honour of Lord Nelson, no doubt. The full Nelson is what he put on the French at Trafalgar. Right. So how soon can you start? What time is it now? I think mm. we need to talk about this. I think we need to take their money and worry about the details later. I'll check our appointment book. She means she'll pencil you in. I mean, we might already be booked up. <laughs> but we can probably squeeze you in. Rose grabs the appointment book from Lily or simply tears a page out. Why well, look, we are opening we and opening this very afternoon, in fact. Ah good, well well, I suppose I should at least go through the motions of interviewing them. Uh, don't you think? I mean, you know, for appearance sake. <laughs> I'm thinking the fact that they have appeared at all is qualification enough. So, tell me, what are your capabilities in French? I'm sorry, French? Yes, French. Are you familiar with the language, uh, I trust? You care to demonstrate? Oh, 
Ah, uh, well, I um, I wasn't expecting that. What do we do? What do I do? I don't know. I, I saw a frog once. Does that count? <laughs> was it a toad? Uh, so what's the one, which is the one with the whole, the warts? Uh, oh, um, we... Yeah, we... Oh, Murphy. Uh, we, Mercy, right, that's good enough for me. Now, <clears throat> not sure why anyone needs to know French anyway. I'm pretty sure that's why William the Conqueror crossed the channel anyway. Horrid little people. <sighs> they eat snails and such. Although they do know how to make wine. <laughs> Let's just hope they don't make it out of snails. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. You're rather slow. It's probably easy to catch them. But, uh, what? Probably a lot of work, though. Wouldn't they have to pluck them out of their shells before you stomp on them? Nah, that's probably what gives them the flavour, don't you think? There's flavour? That stuff at the workhouse sure didn't have any flavour. Oh, that stuff at the workhouse had plenty of flavour. True. Most like, mostly like the bilge water of the Thames. Ops <coughs> to get their attention. Um, right, sorry. It won't happen again. I have no idea what just went on. And not for the first time, either. Right, uh, oh, perhaps I should ask him about some other lessons. Uh, perhaps you shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. Oh, I've got very good teeth, see? Wait, is she calling us a horse? Just smile and imagine you've got shoes nailed to the bottom of your feet. That sounds more like a grimace. But the horse gets fed and has a warm, dry place in the barn. I don't want to be a barn animal. I don't want us to lose this opportunity because you're acting like a horse's... <clears throat> ladies, the interview. Oh, yes, right. Uh, ooh, uh, mathematics. Math. You mean like adding and subtracting and all that? Yeah, that is a general idea, I believe. Oh, yes, we can do that. Right, would you care to demonstrate? Oh, you mean like actually do it? Yes. T two plus two equals? Depends on what the two are, where they are. Two cats plus two mice in the same cellar and you'll wind up with just two cats. Or maybe just one cat. I'm a pretty mean. Although if it's two cats and two rats, now that's not a fair fight. And the smart money is still on the side of the rat. I think that's enough. Miss Calliope probably doesn't need to know much math anyway. Uh, right, right. So what else is there? Oh, uh, literature? Oh, yes. We're very well read, aren't we, Lily? I don't think sleeping on the newspapers every night counts. All those words are bound to sleep too. I know the ink certainly does. I wake up one morning and thought I had a new tattoo. A new tattoo? You mean you had old ones? I'm certain you're telling, although perhaps better to tell than show, eh? Um, uh, literature? You mean like books and stuff? Yes, the same. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. As we were coming up on the way, uh, the postman had asked us to deliver this. Lily produces a parcel about the size of a book. That's something about how he was afraid to step onto the premises ever since the little incident with that monster. Do you have any idea what he's talking about? He also said something about how there was a postal inquiry into a sudden uptick of pornographic literature being mailed into the country from, from the continent, but that didn't seem very relevant. Uh, uh, for Miss Augusta? My book! Augusta seizes the parcel from Lord Havelot. A brown paper wrapper marked for adults only? If you must know, it's a romance novel. I was afraid the Post had con confiscated it, too, for being too risque. Oh, that would be quite the recommendation now, wouldn't it? From Berlin! I'll have to know you, I'll have, I'll have you know that despite all you've heard, the Germans are very romantic people. Goodness knows the English aren't. Now, if you'll excuse me. Augusta retreats to a corner of the room to open her package, which she is unable to do because it's quite securely bound. She struggles with the package through the scene until further noted. So, right, enough of literature. See, no point of it anyway. It's all made up. It's just fiction anyway. I like things that are real. 
your debts are quite real, which is why I have to settle for fantasies of love and passion and getting paid. History. Any Englishman worth his salt should know his country's history. In these enlightened times, I suppose that should go for English women as well. So, what's your grasp on history? If it's anything like yours, it's probably tenuous at best. Uh, um, Battle of Hastings. Agincourt. The Stew Hen. Lovely. Well, I think that's enough history, don't you? It's all in the past anyway. Well, wait a minute, just what about? What about the fact that you're desperate and have no other options? Ah, yes, right, good point. Uh, oh, I'll need to check references, of course. Of course, I have some letters of introduction right here. Oh. What are those? Oh, there's just some old papers I pulled out of a trap. Um, mostly adverts for Liverpool's and men's undergarments. Something called a trap. What? Nobody checks for references anyway. Uh, uh, Miss Augusta, will you check these out, please? Fine. I clearly have nothing else better to do. Augusta takes a package, looks through it. Oh, takes a packet. Uh, I seem to have misplaced my monocle. <laughs> I believe it popped out when I was in pursuit of my quarry. Although I've never, underst I've never understood why I'd want a gravel pit anyway. <laughs> you can't put a bunch of rocks up on the wall. I mean, there's not much of a status symbol there, is there? Hmm? Oh, now look what you've done. Our goose is cooked now. Well, what do you expect me to do? Take the time to forge some letters of recommendation? Besides, that would have been an unethical. And this Hulk charade isn't? If we have to make a break for it, I'll grab the candlestick. You grab the vase. We can at least get something out of it. Yeah, a trip to the penitentiary. Or worse, a one-way ticket to New South Wales. Ooh. All perfectly in order, my lord. Rose and Lily look at each other in disbelief. Perfectly stellar recommendations all around. You might even say they provide quite a bit of um, support. Ah, yeah, yeah, very well then. I accept you into my employment. Uh, Miss Augusta will show you to your quarters. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a safari to prepare for. Lord Havelock pretends to take aim at an unseen animal. Bang! You're dead! <laughs> oh, 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 not you, my dear, the, the elephant in the room. <laughs> I imagine that makes quite a loud thump when he goes down. Oh dear. Oh, I hope he doesn't fall on my guide. I'd hate to have to travel back up the Zambezi without him. Oh, dear God, what have we done? Uh, at what point do we talk about remuneration? We do get paid, right? There's, like, money involved. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely money involved. I can assure you of that. Uh, quite a bit, too, from what I hear. <laughs> so is there a contract we need to sign, something I should show uh, to our solicitor. Do we even have a solicitor? And I'm not counting the one from Leicester, uh, Leicester Square that we nicked the wallet off that one time. Oh, the Lord truly does move in mysterious ways. Of course, oh, so does the African warthog. Oh, I wonder if it has a horn too, or are they just tusks? Guess I'll find out when I... Lord Havelock backs into a chair and gets tangled up with it. Oh, it's a crocodile! It's got me! Oh, oh, where's my hunting guy? Help me! Help me! Help! Uh, Lord Havelock exits Tang... Uh, no? Have I read that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tangled up with the chair. Oh, the poor man. Does he need any help? He better not be poor. We're counting on him to pay us something. I don't suppose either of you girls has a pair of scissors on your person, do you? I'm having quite the time opening my parcel. Sorry, no scissors. But I do have a shiv. Made it myself. It was an arts and crafts project at the orphanage. Rose produces a wicked looking knife. Augusta takes it from her. This should do. We uh, taught at the orphanage, didn't we, before we decided to become governesses? Or whatever we are now. Right, right, yes. We definitely taught those orphans a thing or two. <laughs> how to pick a pocket, how to pick a lock. Augusta finally gets her package open. 
Oh, quit the pretending. I know you're a bunch of con artists trying to take the man for his money. Well, good luck for, with that, as long as I get mine first. That's how capitalism works, you know. Me, I'm just happy to have some company so I don't have to do, deal with you-know-who on my own. I'm sorry, I don't think we do know who. Now, I'd recommend a good night's sleep. You'll need it to deal with the little beast. I mean, Miss Calliope. All that... Although that blade may come in handy too, with her you never know. Now, right this way. Augusta looks at her book. Strange. I don't think this is the romance novel I ordered. Das Kapital by Karl Marx. Oh, maybe it's a false cover. Maybe this means it's extra naughty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Scene three, the next morning at Dweebly Manor, Rhodes and Lily are dressed in mismatched clothes, preparing to meet Calliope. Uh, how do I look? Like you fell out of a gypsy caravan. I rather like it. I think I look eccentric. You're not old enough to be eccentric. The spinster with 57 cats, she's eccentric. You just look like you stole all those clothes from somebody's wash. See, it's an authentic look then. Of course, I probably don't look much better. You look authentic. Great. Thanks for the encouragement. I'm all about encouragement. You realise this is an absolutely insane idea, don't you? It's an absolutely brilliant idea. We have no idea what we're doing. Neither do they. And, that, and what's all this talk about this girl we're supposed to be teaching anyway? She seems like she's a little, well, um, difficult. Augusta enters. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. She's a lot difficult. Oh. Actually, difficult isn't really the word that comes to mind. Difficult would be an improvement most days, in fact. Just out of curiosity, what word does come to mind? Oh, I'm just the maid. Not my place to say. You're the governess. Governesses. Well, how about governor? None of the S business on the end, just governor. I rather like the sound of that. Good morning, governor. How are things down the club, governor? Beastly weather we're having today, isn't it, governor? I think the plural is governor, you know, like octopus, octopi. Rose and Lily fall into a side conversation in whispers. Octopi, I thought that was like something you ate, you know, one of those little meat eyes cut into eight slices no that it's one of the, those squid things eight arms oh, that's disgusting i can't believe i ate one of those when did you buy octopus pie oh i didn't I, I stole it you stole it i thought i was getting a bargain you were getting some nasty underwater sea monster that shoots ink oh how did it taste what do you mean how did it taste oh i didn't eat it i gave it all to you <laughs> Yuck! I thought it was a sisterly thing to do. No, it's not. Well, maybe <laughs> big sisterly. <laughs> Are you two quite finished? Oh, right, yes. Yeah. We've come to an agreement. And that is? Uh, we prefer the term governators. Governatrix. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> oh, I don't know all those fancy words. I just dust the books in the library. I don't have to read them. Oh, we know lots of fancy words. We're not just not supposed to say them in polite society, polite company. Isn't that right, Lily? Uh, well, I mean... Dreadful tomes they are. Me, I only read romance novels. Just between you and me, the naughty French ones. Although... I'll admit that last one they sent me is quite the bodice ripper. Here, let me read you something from it. Workers of the world, you have nothing to lose but your chains. Doesn't that just get your heart racing? Uh, I don't think that's about what you think it's about. Oh, I know what it's about. Yes? 
It's about the oppression of the proletariat by the corporate masters of capitalism. What? Get your mind out of the gutter. Right. Uh, so, when do we meet our new child? Well, aren't you the eager ones? Of course, some of the others were too. Poor girls. You'll be just like them soon enough, I'll warrant. Oh, well, we're poor already, aren't we, Lily? Poor as church mice we are. Maybe the church mice need to read themselves some Karl Marx. Rise up against the capitalists. Of course, the church mice wouldn't be so poor if they knew how to sneak a few bills in the collection place. Get it? Capitalists? Did I mention that we're regular churchgoers? Probably best you didn't. Can you believe they actually pass around a plate full of money? I don't really understand their business model, but they understand ours. Oh, never mind. You'll wind up just like all the others, scarred for life. Oh, so may I ask just how this girl is so, whatever the word is? Oh, you'll see. You'll see. But first, I will give you some advice. What's that? Please, God, don't fail. I'd really like to get paid sometime before I die. That's your advice. Don't fail? That doesn't sound like advice. That sounds more like a plea. I could wish for a workers' revolution to redistribute the wealth, or I could wish for you two to succeed where all others have failed. Oh, who am I kidding? I've got a better chance waiting for the revolution. So, are you ready? Ready, willing, and able. Speak for yourself. Augusta knocks on Calliope's door and opens it. Oh, Calliope, your new governess is here. And guess what? This time there are two of them. Calliope appears. She looks perfectly normal and acts quite sweet. Perhaps she even curtsies. Bonjour. Oh, let me guess. Um, that's French, right? Isn't that French? That's French. I've been practicing my French. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Especially since we don't know any French. Well, I'll leave it to you. I'll leave you to it. I'll be in my room. If any, anyone needs me, reading up on how I've got nothing to lose but my chains. Oh. Augusta <laughs> exits. Would you care to see the project I've been working on for my French lessons? Well, I uh, sure. Why not? We'd love to. I'm Lily, by the way. And I'm Rose. Oh, I don't bother learning names. Nobody ever stays long enough anyways. No point taking up all that space in my brain. Saves me room to think about in my projects. Your project. What kind of projects? Art projects? Science projects? Calliope produces a very elaborate scale model. Engineering. Oh, what's this? This is a scale model of the French Revolution. The whole revolution? I'm not sure that's the French we're supposed to teach. Here we have Bastille, and here we have the mob. On top of this thing here. Oh, that. That's the guillotine. Oh. That's definitely not the French one supposed to teach. So is this nothing real? Rose reaches to touch the guillotine. Careful, it's sharp. Ow! I told you. She did. Would you like to see how it works? I think I just did. How about uh, this? Calliope picks up a doll. You just have to imagine that this is the enemy of the people. Calliope puts the doll in the guillotine. Oh, Dolly, you've been accused by the Committee of Public Safety of unspeakable crimes. How do you plead? Oh, never mind. Doesn't really make any difference anyway. The people have spoken. The pen is mightier than the sword, but the blade is sharper than both. Lyope acti activates the guillotine. The doll's head is severed. Oh! Uh. Oh, poor Dolly. I'll just have to put her over here with all the others. Calliope reaches into the basket and produces the severed heads of the other dolls. 
This one's King Louis the Sixteenth. This one's Marie Antoinette, and this one here is Robert Sphere. Calliope looks at Rose and Lily and smiles. So, what do you think? Do I pass French? Ah, uh, sure. What do you say, Lily? <laughs> <laughs> Scene four, later at Dweebly Manor. Rose and Lily are talking. I don't think we're cut out for this. I'm just cut. This girl is positively mental. She is quite smart. I mean, she's crazy. She's unusual. She's dangerous. She's got potential. Potential for what? A mental asylum or just one of those regular prisons? Neither, silly. Take. Okay, you've lost me. It could be our co-conspirator. A co-conspirator for what? Our crime syndicate. Our crime what? We could use someone in the upper classes to be our patron. Introduce us to a higher level of crime. A more sophisticated level of crime. The upper classes aren't patrons of crime, they're patrons of the arts, that sort of thing. All the better then. There's a market opportunity, a niche waiting to be filled, and an excellent cover story. Now I think you're mental. I prefer the term mastermind. But we're not criminals. We are now. We're just sea urchins, sea urchins, <laughs> street urchins, <laughs> orphans. <laughs> It's 19th century England. I'm pretty sure being poor is a crime. We're just unemployed. Face it, Lily. We're unemployed because we're unemployable, which is precisely why we need a patron. And this patron would employ us? This patron would. Well, I'm a little hazy on the details, but I'm sure we can work out those um, in time. As long as that time isn't five to ten years in the penitentiary. Nonsense. Respectable people don't go to the penitentiary for mere thievery. They get nice. <laughs> so if we have a patron, we'll be respectable. No, but we might be rich. Trust me, they're not the same thing. I trusted you, and look where we are now. We're not sleeping on the street and rummaging through trash bins for food, are we? No, but we soon will be once they discover we're not who we say we are. Is anybody really who they say they are? Don't go getting philosophical on this, Rose. You know you don't make any sense when you get philosophical. I see a great future ahead of me. Come to think of it, you don't make any sense a lot of the time. Ladies in waiting for Lady Calliope. Ladies waiting for what? An opportunity. When they throw one of those big balls, we go around and nick all the ladies' past. Don't you think they'll notice? We'll just take the small bill. We're not greedy. Augusta enters. Oh, you're still here. Oh, hello. Um, where else would we be? I can think of a lot of places. Most of the new governesses don't last past the first lesson. Except for that last one. That one that Calliope locked in the cellar. We didn't find her for a week. So I guess... Technically, she didn't last past the first lesson either. Poor girl, she never was able to tell us. Lord have a lot, we've got two on the line here. You better reel them in quick before they get away. Now, don't you two go anywhere. Uh, we weren't. You weren't? We don't really have anywhere else, other place to go. You truly are desperate, aren't you? Lord, have a lot enters. Oh, you're still here. Yes, we've established that fact. Well, that's uh, unusual. <laughs> ah, but have no fear. I have prepared for any eventuality, no matter how remote. Right, here's a list of all the things you'll need to teach my niece. Ah. Lord, have a lot hands a list to Rose. Like how not to kill people? Look, that's quite unfair. Calliope hasn't actually killed anybody. Yet. Ah, uh, right. <clears throat> First, the basics. <clears throat> Knitting, dancing, table man. Lily. 
as, as if we know how, uh, as if we know any of those things. I mean, uh, uh, yes, of course. Right, uh, then the intermediate level graces. Sewing, flower arranging, the art of polite conversation. You mean polite as in please and thank you, or polite as in no bad words? I think he means polite as in avoiding certain touchy subjects. Oh, you mean like politics and religion? Or his colossal personal debt and the inherent privilege of the upper classes. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, for the uh, piece de resistance. Crocheting, tea making, and perhaps on occasion, even some poetry. Uh, English poetry. The kind that rhymes. None of that freestyle French nonsense. Tea making? <laughs> Don't you just boil some water? Right, so any questions? Uh, do you think it's wise to trust Calliope with, a, with knitting needles or any kind of sharp object? I'm sure these two fine young governesses will make a proper woman out of our Calliope in no time. Or hmm. maybe make a proper mess of things. Right, so very well then. You have your instructions, I must be off. Target practice at the club <laughs> and toasting at the range. Oh, or is it the other way around? I must get that straightened out before I get to Africa. <laughs> Lord Havelock exits. What are we going to do? We don't know how to do these things. We'll improvise. Improvise? How do we? How do we sewing or knitting or half of these those things? The only thing on that list I know how to do is boil water for tea, and I'm pretty sure he means something fancier than that. He's probably talking about serving buttered scones, or and which side of the table to put the butter knife on, and things like that. That's easy. You stick the butter knife in your boot in case you need it later. I mean, in polite society. That is polite society. In the rest of society, you might need that knife now and not later. Calliope enters. Oh, you're still here. We seem to be hearing that a lot. Well, if you stuck it out this long, I suppose I should give you the list. The list? The list of things I'd like to be schooled in. Oh, we already have the list. I realise that's not the natural order of things, but I don't really believe in the natural order of things. Do you? The natural order of things is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Um, <clears throat> Gambling, swearing, and drinking. Oh, we hear those things we know. Wait, is this for real? Sword fighting, horse racing, sea gambling above, and side tricks. This is very different from the list your uncle gave us. We actually know some of these things. Counterfeiting, forging, documents not ironworked, and dueling. Dueling? You mean like with pistols? Well, every young lady should know how to defend her honour. Don't you think? In my day, when ladies talked about going to the powder room, they meant talcum powder, not gunpowder. So what do you say? Sounds good to me, let's get started. Rose pulls a deck of cards and a bottle of liquor from her boot or pocket. So, which shall we learn first? The gambling or the drinking? We can always work in that swearing thing as we go along. Now I've seen everything. Well, not a workers' rebel, workers' rebellion, but everything else. Maybe I should go read some more of this um, romance novel. Oh, Carl, take me away! I'm yours. Augusta exits. Come on, let's get started. I'll deal. No fair. You always cheat. I thought that was the point. Not with your sister. You don't know much about sisters, do you? Rose and Lily exit. Well, this is not working out as planned. End of Act One. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now what? What do we do? Do we do we just keep going? Like, what happens now? Yeah. 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 Keep going. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Keep going. Scene one. In the dark, we see and hear an explosion. Rose, Lily, and Calliope run in, covered it in soot. Oh, wow, that was nearly fatal. 
I was going to say amazing. The flame shot out taller than the house. A bird, singed black, falls dead from the sky and lands near the trio. Paula, is that? Rose picks up the dead bird and bites into it. Land. Want some? <laughs> Ew. Okay, why not? Lily bites into the bird. Not like the other governesses. No, no we're not. And is this a good thing? Because right now I'm not too certain. Kind of like you. <clears throat> Want some? Sure. Calliope bites into the bird. Not bad. What is it? Kind of hard to tell now, isn't it? <clears throat> You've got a point. Calliope gnaws on the bird. Augusta rushes in. Oh, good heavens! What was that? Science experiment. I'm not sure if it succeeded or failed. Oh, it succeeded. It went boom! Oh, dear lord. Is anybody hurt? Well, we did have one casualty. Who was that? Oh, I didn't catch his name. Probably not a pheasant. Perhaps a pigeon. See, we're teaching ornithology too. And the culinary arts as well. If you call scorching a bird with an open flame culinary. In some cultures, they call it barbecuing. It's considered a high art form. Perhaps even worthy of a chef's hat. Care for some? You're eating dead pigeon. Well, the live ones fight back too much. Much like the working classes ought to if only they had a higher class consciousness. What's it taste like? Very flavorful. Wouldn't you say flavorful? Oh, absolutely. Definitely has a flavor. Oh, what the heck? Maybe there is such a thing as a free lunch. Augusta takes the pigeon and bites into it. Just not sure what kind of flavor. The blackened feathers add a nice texture, don't you think? I think you're supposed to pick those out. Please, right. We pick them out and save them to make a bonnet out of scaring to something to scare the children with at Halloween or the adults the rest of the year. Lord Havelock enters. Um. Hello, Uncle. Care for some roasted pigeon? It's not bad. Beats my cooking most days. What's the meaning of this? <clears throat> it's a chemistry lesson, sir. Haven't you heard? Chemistry is all the rage. It's what every young lady is expected to know these days. The only chemistry I'm interested in is the personal chemistry between my niece here and her prospective suitors. And even that only needs to be temporary. I'm sure we'll get along just like nitrous oxide and carbon disulfide. Rose, Lily and Augusta all look at Calliope in amazement. What? You think I spent all my day reading Jane Austen novels, Pride and Prejudice, Potassium Water, Boom? Well, you all look like a bunch of chimney sweeps. A noble profession. We're honoured, sir. Maybe that's one we should have thought about before we got mixed up in this. And Miss Augusta, I am shocked to see you out here. Don't mind me, sir. I'm just having me lunch. Right, well, the rest of you go get cleaned up. Go, go on now, in the house. Rose, Lily and Calliope exit. Augusta continues eating. No more chemistry lessons. No more sciences at all. And especially not the ones that hurt the local pigeon population. Lord Havelock picks up the dead pigeon and speaks lovingly to it. I'm the one who's supposed to blast you out of the sky, not them. Oh, poor little Pidgey. Oh. Right, gather up a brace of these and put them in the pot. Some of the old boys from the club are coming over tonight for a rousing evening of drinking scotch and telling outlandishly colourful tales, which likely contain not even a shred of truth. Oh, perhaps we can pass these off as something, I don't know, exotic. Lord Havelock exits. Scene two, in the house. Rose, Lily and Calliope are engaged in some new lessons. They're playing cards. Rose is dealing. Okay. This time, aces, high. Jokers and two are wild. And any combination of three consecutive odd black numbers beat a royal flush. Wait, am I going to have to, I'm going to have to write this all down. So what's the trick? That's the trick. Make it so complicated that the other players have to write things down. Then, when she's not looking, voila! Rose pulls some extra aces from her clothing, cleavage preferred. 
you deal yourself an extra ace. Oh, I like that trick, except Calliope produces two extra aces. I have two extra aces. Hey, how, how to do that? I marked my- I marked that deck myself. Remember the forgery lessons you taught me? Those were this morning. What can I say? I'm a fast learner. I like the way you think. Oh, that's very nice calligraphy work. Thank you. So what's next? The gambling? The drinking? I can't wait till we get, get to do dueling. Um, maybe we should put the dueling off a little while longer yet. <laughs> oh, so what'll it be? Pistols at 20 paces or maybe an old-fashioned jousting tournament? You'll need a horse. Uh, you need a horse for that. Oh, I have a horse. You do? Well, technically not yet, but you are going to teach me some theory, aren't you? Maybe right now we should stick to the card tricks. Those other, other governesses try to teach me things like how to curtsy and which fork to use. <laughs> You're teaching me actual life skills. There's more than one fork available. Well, there's a salad fork, the dinner fork. Uh, the fork over all your money and nobody gets hurt. Oh, I like that one. Strangely, nobody in Piccadilly Circus does. Lord Havelock enters. Um. <clears throat> Uncle? Lord Havelock. Your Grace, Your Worship, Your Lordship, well, whatever the words are. Uh, uh, what's this? A game of cards? Uh, yes, but I can explain. Tell me explainingly. What's this sweet business? You're teaching my niece to play at cards? Quite well, too, actually. I've already won 20 pounds. Too bad it's still counterfeit. Rose and Lily are whispering to each other as Lord Havelock inspects the table. Whoa, you made all that? I told you she was good at calligraphy. We could make a fortune at this. I believe she already has. You're doing this all wrong, you realise? Wrong is my middle name. Or actually, it's something per perfectly boring or respectable. But once I'm old enough to change it, I'm going to get it changed. Ideally, something more positively scandalous, or even negatively scandalous. Yes, no, you need four players, not three. I beg your pardon? Well, you're teaching my niece to play bridge, right? Oh, bridge. Sure, absolutely. Good. Very ladylike pastime. Love bridge. Especially London bridge. Even better when it's falling down. It is a construction floor. Or maybe sabotage. What's bridge? I thought we were playing gin rummy. Except without the gin. Rose takes a swig from her hidden flask. Speak to yourself. Uh, but you'll never learn to play it properly with just three players. Uh, Gallaby, go tell Miss Havisham, uh, Miss Augusta to join you, will you? Oh, uh, it won't make a lady out of her, but perhaps it'll make one of you. Where is Miss Augusta? Oh, I saw, last I saw, she was doing the laundry. Must be the day to do the reds. I had no idea we had so many red things. <laughs> I'll find her and I'll bring her back. It's almost as good as kidnapping someone and making them hostage. The London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down, falling down. The London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Like <laughs> yeah, right, she's gone. Perhaps we should... Um... No, no, I want you to stay. I want to speak with you. Uh, perhaps I should. Both of you. Yes, sir. Right, I don't know what it is with you two, but... Uh... Oh, no, here it comes. Whatever it is, it seems to be working. That wasn't where I thought that was going. Yep, ever since you two arrived, I've never seen Gullaby so, so, uh, ooh, um, Happy? Sociable? Upbeat? Optimistic? No, I was going to say less murderous, but no, those will do, yes. Uh. Less murderous, okay, that's progress, right? Right, here's the thing. Uh, we need more. A lot more. He's learning to play well with others even if it does involve cheating half the time. And her calligraphy is quite good. Oh, I don't care about any of that. Here's what I do care about. In three days' time... Is that the same as three days or something different? And do we start counting the three days now or tomorrow? I always get confused. What? Will you just listen to me? Okay, we're listening. All ears, see? Shh. 
I have made arrangements with a young man, a completely proper fellow, third son of some minor peerage, or, or maybe seventh. It doesn't really matter. What matters is he'll be coming to dine with us Saturday night. And I absolutely must have young Calabi completely presentable by then. Sure, we can teach her which fork to use by then. How to curtsy. How not to go off on a rant about how Richard III could have won the Battle of Bosworth Field if only it hadn't been for those treacherous Lord Stanley. That treacherous Lord Stanley. <laughs> Although her reenactment with the salt and pepper shakers was quite convincing. I rather like the part where she sliced off some ham and likened that to. Um, on the other hand, maybe that's not proper dinner time conversation. Right, let me be more direct then. The young man is coming with one purpose in mind. Eh? A free meal. Oh, God. Some pleasant company? What? No! Oh, perhaps. Well, I don't know uh, about all of that. I do know this, though. He's coming to meet Calliope. And if all goes well, <laughs> let's just say we could be hearing wedding bells. Oh, he plays an instrument then, does he? What? There's no trust nearby. I mean that if he and Calliope get along, that is, if she behaves herself for the duration of one evening, he will propose marriage. Oh, but she hasn't even met her yet. Naturally, I shall give my consent and see them married within a fortnight, united in the sweet bonds of holy matrimony. Wait, you'll give your consent? What about Calliope? But that's how the upper classes work. They don't believe in love or that other kind of thing. Marriage is more of a business ring. Exactly. A business arrangement. Oh, if you're thinking like that, you might have some no blood in you somewhere. Probably a bastard somewhere along the line, four or five centuries back. Hmm. Hey! From what do we care? We're orphans. Not like we have a family crest or anything. If we did, it would probably be a pair of fingers slipping into somebody else's. Our motto, we live by our wits, and you're whatever we can nick from you. But, so, you see, it's imperative that Calliope makes a good impression on this young man. I can't exactly say she's had a long line of suitors queued up to ask for her hand. Not since that one time the young lad knelt down to kiss her hand and she knocked his front teeth out. Mm. Word like that tends to get out for some reason. <laughs> Perhaps Calliope doesn't wish to be married. Doesn't wish to be married? Poppycock! What young woman doesn't wish to be married? Um, uh, to abandon her maiden name, to dedicate herself solely and completely to her husband's happiness, to subsume her very identity in his. Oh, what a grand institution. It's every woman's true desire. It is? And here I always thought it was a good night's sleep. Uh, besides, not her choice. <clears throat> As her uncle and guardian, it's my responsibility to make her choice for her. And I have chosen this young fellow, whatever his name is. You don't even know what his name is. Oh, it's Solomon or Sebastian or Sherman or Stanley or... Oh, it's something like that. Look, I'm sure it's on the paperwork somewhere, but his references are good, quite impeccable, in fact. I'm almost giddy at the prospect myself. Let's certainly put a spring in my step, so let me put it to you like this. <clears throat> if dinner goes well and produces my desired results, you'll find a few extra shillings in your pocket. <laughs> How many shillings exactly? Uh, quite enough, my dear girl. Uh, quite enough to, uh, for you to live on, like a lord, for a day or two. <clears throat> Do you think you could make that some um, banknotes instead? Shillings are hard to carry around. Uh, fine, 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 fine. The point is, you'll get a little something extra for your trouble. Uh, consider it an incentive bonus, if you will. So, do we have an understanding? I think I understand well enough. Good. Saturday night it is, then. Cheerio, then. I just have one question. Uh, uh, what's that? If marriage is such a grand institution, why is it that you've never married? Lily! Good heavens, girl! What a ridiculous question! Do you have any idea how expensive a wife is? Oh, no, quite a lot of bother if you ask me. Police Goliath's gentleman caller comes with a full line of credit. Right, hip hip now. Tell you her, must get in some target practice before dark. The great animals of Africa await their violent demise. Uh, but sporting, mind you. Violent, but sporting. The English way. <laughs> Lord Havelock exits. Rose and Lily look at each other and speak simultaneously. This is terrible. This is terrific. What? What? How can you say that? Say that. 
don't you see? We're on the verge of pulling this off. And he's going to pay us a bonus at the end. And then what? We'll be unemployed again? We were always going to be unemployed again at some point. Besides, I thought you were the one who wasn't keen on this whole scam. I, I wasn't. I mean, I was. I mean, I'm not. It's just that. It's just what? I, he's going to sell that poor girl off like a sheep or something. I'm not sure I'd call Calliope a sheep. Maybe a wolf in sheep's clothing, but definitely not a sheep. You know what I mean. He's arranging a marriage for her with some stranger she's never met. That is what defines a stranger. They're not having met her. But she may not even like him. But we get paid for it. I know, but I feel, I feel bad for her. It's the hazard of being rich. Poor people like us are free to make our own decisions. People, poor, people like us are just poor. It's not, I'm not exactly feeling a lot of freedom. Well, we won't be poor if we pull this off. I get the feeling we're going to be paid handsomely. I just Calliope, guess... and, sorry. Calliope and Augusta enter. Augusta is waving a bright red banner. Found her. So are you ready now? I'm ready. Let the revolution begin. Scene three, a few days later. Rose, Lily and Calliope are together for lessons. Okay, so how about today we work on... Uh, the street fighting, the sucker punch. Calliope acts out fighting with Lily. Hey! Um, I was thinking curtsy. Oh, what's that? Is that a code word for some kind of secret move? Is it a sharp elbow to the ribs? Calliope gives Lily a sharp elbow to the ribs. Ah! Or, or maybe a sudden kick to the shins! Calliope kicks at Lily. Ow! Or maybe where I approach some ladylike and then BAM! Some, but suddenly I put her in headlock! Calliope oh. puts Lily in a headlock. Oh. Um, oh, I like that. Very good technique. You might try a tighter grip on the windpipe next. Lily continues to struggle. Rose now becomes more serious. Um, but actually, I was thinking of a more traditional curtsy. You know? Rose curtsies badly, perhaps several times if it's funny enough. Or something like that. Why are you still holding Lily in a grip? What? No, no fighting. Lily still struggles. N not today. Because you'll never guess where I've hidden my switchblade. Lily still struggles. Where? I mean... Maybe another day. Lily still struggles. How about boxing? None of those Marquis or Queensbury rules either. I'm all for hitting above, below the belt. In fact, how about we take off the belt and wrap it around somebody's neck until they turn blue in the face? Lily still struggles. Um, maybe you should let her go. Fine. Calliope releases Lily, who comes up gasping. <gasps> oh, God. I was also thinking of a pair of brass knuckles. That way, when somebody kneels to kiss my hand, BAM! Straight to the kisser. How many teeth do you think that would knock out? Uh, probably quite a few. Oh good, my record is three, but that would just be with my bare hand. Oh, I know, we could make it a game. We dress up in fancy clothes and go down to the park and see how many young men want to court us. The one who knocks out the most teeth wins. What do you think? I think, um, I think we should stick to the curtsy. What's wrong? Something's wrong. You nearly strangled me, that's what's wrong. No, not you. I know what's wrong with you. I meant her. Me? And nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. Shall we get started? But what about all the fun stuff? All the forbidden stuff? Or is it some kind of bait and switch? Because if so, I still have my switchblade. She's try just trying to help you get ready for Saturday night so we can collect our big payoff. What's Saturday night? What big payoff? I thought we were going to a pub crawl in Soho in Saturday night. Or was it picking pockets? I lose track. What my sister means is... What I mean is... Rose shoots Lily a look. What do I mean? You mean that Saturday marks the end of the calendar week and it's 
good to have goals. So our goal should be by Saturday night, you have achieved certain goals. And there's always a big payoff in reaching your goals. Isn't that right, Lily? Whatever you say, I'm just along for the ride. You're both lying. You're lying like a rug. I prefer to think of myself more like a flying carpet. You're, you're lying through your teeth. What? Do I have something in their teeth? Do I? I hate when that happens. You're lying like a dog. I'm more partial to cats myself. They're sneakier. Suddenly, Calliope comes up behind Rose and Lily and gets them both in a hold around the neck. Now, I already told you I had a switchable hidden away. Which one of you wants to find out where it is hidden? Um, this is a lot gentler than you put me in the headlock before, actually. Calliope tightens her grip on Lily. Ow! And just for the record, I never said I had only one. So who wants to tell me what's going on? She does. She does. Keep talking what's going on. Ah, uh, it's supposed to be a surprise. Oh, I don't like surprises. I am the surprise. Go on, you tell her. Yes, please tell me. You can't let on that you know. Oh, I assure you, I'm the master of deceit and deception. Technically, in your case, that would be mistress. Calliope squeezes Lily harder. Although I'm fine with master if you are. So what is it? Why the sudden change in plans? Because on Saturday night, your uncle is inviting over a young man who intends to propose marriage. Which he intends to accept on your behalf. Oh, he does, does he? So we're supposed to make sure you're presentable so he won't black out. Back out. And he promised us a nice bonus if it all works out. Works out for him, you mean? Well, um, <clears throat> that is who we're working for. Calliope releases Rose and Lily. We can change that. I told Rose it was a bad idea to try and fake this whole governess thing. You're not supposed to say that. What? That you're frauds? Oh, I knew that long ago. Why do you think I like you two so much? I guess I wasn't where you actually liked us. So, can you act like this is all a surprise? Maybe we can do uh, some drama lessons, just to be sure. I'm very much in favour of drama. In fact, I even have a recommendation. Yes? How about the taming of the shrew? Um, sure, work for me. What's Taming of the Shrew? I think it's Darwin, perhaps his sequel of that evolution? It's Shakespeare. Right, we knew that, didn't we? We, we knew that. Shakespeare wrote about evolution. And it's meant to be ironic? Here, you can look it up. Lively tosses a book of Shakespeare plays to Lily. Good cat. Maybe after we're done here, we can pass ourselves off as rugby coaches. Lily opens the book. Oh, the complete works of Shakespeare. Don't suppose my uncle mentioned why he's in such a hurry to marry me off, did he? Nothing out of the ordinary, no. Don't even know. You don't even know very much about us, do you? Um, no. Is that required? Oh, look at this, Taming of the Shrew. So let me ask you. Can you keep a secret? Enter the beggar Christopher Sly. Pay attention. Getting ready to tell us the secret. So can you? We can keep lots of things. Pockets of pitch, knickknacks of nick. Well, at least until we can pawn them off and go back off on the street again. Sure, what you got? The reason why my uncle wants to marry me off is that he can do so before I'm 21. Then he inherits my father's estate and not me. Oh. Your father's estate, you say? A rather sizable estate, if I do say so myself. Wait, is that all there is to Christopher Sly? Just four lines? That's not much of a part. It's a prologue, a distraction, which is exactly what I am. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Flyby. I'm sure you're much more than a distraction. I mean, why do you think everyone thinks I'm some crazy homicidal maniac? Ah, uh, because you are. Because you're the shrew who needs to be tamed. You're catching on. And so that makes us the shrew tamers. Sort of like lion tamers, uh huh? I could get a sparkly jacket and a top hat and a whip and a chair. Lily, here, come be my lovely assistant and... Flyby glares. All right, maybe I'll skip the top hat. 
it would probably come off anyway. Still not getting it, are you? We don't get to be shrewd him. I thought that's kind of what we got hired for. Well, that and taking the old man for his money. So we flip over to Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 5. Act 1, Scene 5. Oh, a ghost. Skip past that. Down about the right, there. That's Hamlet speaking. Clive points out a place on the page. Here as before, never. So help you mercy. How strange and odd summer I bear myself. As I perchance hereafter shall think meet and put an antic disposition on. What's that mean? It means she's put an antic disposition on. What's an antic disposition? Are you ready for some antics? Maybe a puppet show, or a harmless prank or two, or juggling. How about some juggling? It's quite easy, as long as you don't uh, drop anything. Or perhaps learning how to curtsy. It means Hamlet decided to act if he was crazy. Oh, I get it now. Actually, I don't. Who wants to marry a crazy homicidal maniac? Wait, Hamlet is the killer? I thought his uncle was. No, I'm so confused now. Not Hamlet, Lily, me. You're the killer? Wait, who's even dead? This really makes no sense now. I mean, who wants to marry me if they think I'm crazy? If even the sternest governess flees in terror after just a few hours of my diabolical presence. Sure, I may be young and beautiful, but I might also just spoon out somebody's eyeballs and have them for tea. Besides, I never much cared for cucumber sandwiches anyways, and eyeballs do appear to have, be about the same right size as snacking. Wait, you mean this whole thing was just an act? You mean like a play within a play? I mean like Hamlet Act 2, Scene 2. There is a method to my madness. I get it. You're just pretending to be crazy, so you won't have to get married before you're 21. And then you can inherit your late father's estate. Precisely. A sizable estate. That otherwise would go to your uncle, just like the Crown of Denmark would to Hamlet's uncle. Just need to wait him out. Except now he's got some lad coming over in spite of all that. He must be even crazier than you are. And your uncle intends to marry you off against your wishes. As your legal guardian, he's able to do that under the misogynistic laws of 19th century Britain. I think you've summed things up quite nicely. I wish that we lived in the 21st century. I'm sure they have eliminated, eliminated all problems by then. The vast gulf between rich and poor, inequality of genders. The lack of a decent tea time food. What? I never liked cucumber sandwiches either. When did you ever have a cucumber sandwich anyway? There was that time we saw some cucumbers from somebody's garden in North Finchley. Eating raw cucumbers plucked from the vine is not the same thing as a cucumber sandwich. What? I was supposed to pluck them from the vine? Maybe that was the problem. They did seem awfully long and stringy. Calliope seizes Rose and Lily in a headlock again. Enough! Uh-oh. Now what? The question is not now what, but what now? Well, I suppose we could have a grammar lesson if you want. Calliope releases Rose and Lily. I mean, we need to plan for this dinner. We? Well, I thought that's what we were doing with the curtsy. I mean, how to so thoroughly frighten this fellow so he abandons all thought of proposing marriage. You could do a dramatic reading of Dante's Inferno. Marriage is like hell. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. I like that, I like that. But then we wouldn't get the bonus we were promised. I think what Rose is saying is that we have a conflict of interest. We'd like to help you, but we're getting paid by your uncle. And if my plan works, you'll, you'll be getting paid by me. Really? How much? Let's just say more than what my uncle would have been. How's that? Work for me. I guess you could say we've been incentivized. The free market system at its finest. Augusta enters. 
seize the means of production. Whoever is not with us is against us. Forward to victory. There better not be any Sorry. cucumber sandwiches. If there Sorry. are, that would be a crime against the state. You don't want to be an enemy of the people, do you? No, but I do know how to make a cucumber sandwich you like. How's that? Off with their heads! Oh, I do like this. But I like something else even better. Here, let me let you on a little secret. Calliope puts her arm around Augusta and whispers in her ear as they all exit. Scene four, the night of the dinner. The dining room at Dweebly Manor. Lord Havelock is pacing about nervously. Right, now let's see. Zebras are the ones with the stripes, but tigers have stripes too. How will I ever be able to tell them apart? Augusta enters. Because you won't see the tiger when he leaps out of the brush and grabs you and turns you into dinner. Well, ah, oh, you startled me. Oh, ah, ah. Tigers are like that. Roar! Fortunately for you, though, tigers don't live in Africa. Ah, so stripes then, zebras. <laughs> Do you think they're black stripes on a white background or white stripes on a ba black background? I was thinking black stripes on white, except their noses are black. So maybe they are white stripes on black. What do you think? I think, I think you should worry about the hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, where? I don't know. That's why you should worry. Oh. He looks around nervously. I hear they kill more people than any other animal on Earth. Oh, well, that can't be true. They're just big lugs that lie around in the water all day. Until they rise up under your steamer going up the Nile and toss you over into the crocodile-infested waters. Oh. Why would they do that? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps they are working class animal in solidarity with working class people, comrades in arms, and hooves. The doorbell rings. Oh, 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 oh he's, here. he's here, he's here, he's here, is everything in order? Oh, things are more in order than you can imagine, sir. Perfect, perfect, right, <clears throat> go see you then. Yes, sir. Uh, and then go fetch Calliope. Yes, sir. And make sure her governess has come with her too. I'll make sure she behaves herself and everything goes according to plan. Yes, sir. I believe they will. Oh, I can practically smell that money now. Oh, oh. oh it's a dinner. Oh, perhaps it's my cologne. Oh. Augusta opens the door. A young man calling himself Sidney Melbourne Brisbane the Fourth is standing there. He is well dressed and charming, but not whom he claims to be. Hello. I'm Sydney Melbourne Brisbane the Fourth, calling for Lord Havelock. Sydney, my boy, Sydney, 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 Sydney. I knew it was one of those S names. I knew it couldn't be Stanley. He's lost down in Africa, poor chap. Or is that Livingston? Ah, one or the other. I always get them confused. Hope they don't send a journalist to come looking after me when I go off to Africa. What a dreadful embarrassment that would be. Writers, whoo, lowest of the low. Now, please, come in. Make yourself at home. Augusta, go tell Calliope that her gentleman caller is here. Yes, sir. Augusta exits. You have a very fine home, sir. Very nicely appointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. Although I can't wait until I get a few more appointments for it. Who? maybe even a zebra. They're the ones with the stripes, you know. <laughs> tell me, do you think they're white stripes on black or black stripes on white? Well, I can't say I've ever really thought about zebras. Oh, that's what I like about you, Sydney. You've got your eyes on big again. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, sorry. Uh, Augusta enters with Calliope followed by Rose and Lily. Sir. Ah, ah very good. Uh, Sydney, may I introduce you to my lovely niece, Calliope. Calliope, may I present to you Mr. Sydney Melbourne Brisbane the Fourth. Rose and Lily look at each other. Something is up. Sydney bends over to kiss Calliope's outstretched hand. The honour is all mine. That's true, because I have none. Calliope raises her hand and smacks Sydney in the nose. Thou! 
Lord Havelot doesn't notice this. He's busy getting ready to introduce Brisbane to Rose and Lily, who are not sure how to react. My mistake. I was hoping to gouge out your eyes. Maybe next time. Uh, and these two are Calliope's two governesses, Rose and Lily. <laughs> two, eh? Oh, yes. That'd be the best for Calliope. But, but I can assure you that no matter what you've heard, they have, been, they have schooled Calliope to be a proper young lady. <laughs> I quite imagine they have. Rose and Lily Kirsty. Hmm, a pleasure. I can feel already we have quite a bit in common. Oh. Uh, Lily elbows Rose. It's almost as if we've known each other all our lives. Thank you. Uh, Rose elbows Lily. Right. So perhaps uh, an aperitif before dinner? <laughs> he turns his back and pre prepares to pour drinks for himself in Sydney. Rose and Lily still look at each other, perhaps whispering amongst themselves. That sounds lovely. Works for me. Uh, Calliope pulls a flask out of her dress and takes a swig. Ah, uh, Rotkart whiskey. She offers her flask to Sydney. Want some? Um, I, I don't. Ah, uh, it's a secret recipe. Stole it from a pirate. I think he's put a bounty on my head. Any moment now, bloodthirsty gang of cutthroat might burst through that door seeking revenge. Do you think you could defend me from them? Oh, uh, uh, yes, of course, I could. Oh, you poor boy. <laughs> I'd probably just slit your throat first to show them I meant business. And then they'd grovel away at my feet and beg me to be their leader. Pirates don't know what a real leader leadership is, but I do. Fear is powerful motivator. Don't you agree? Lord Havelot has missed all this. He turns and offers a drink to Sydney. Right, here you go. <laughs> Please have a seat, everybody. <laughs> uh, Lord Havelot, Sydney, Calliope Rhodes and Lily take their seats. Augusta gets ready to sit. Not you. You're the help. The help stands. Augusta stands. I won't stand for that. Or maybe I will. Well, why did you go see about dinner, Miss Augusta? Yes, we need to know if it's ble bleating, mooing, oinking, or clucking. Very well. No need to cook mine. I like mine raw, preferably even still living. I like to eat it while it's still squealing. Augusta exit. So, Sydney has quite an interesting history, don't you, Sydney? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure he does. Lily elbows rose. Let me guess, you robbed banks, spent time as a highwayman on the old King's Road, swindled an elderly mar matron out of her fortune. <laughs> oh, Calliope has a very unique sense of humor, <laughs> doesn't she? <laughs> Was I laughing? Was anybody laughing? I'm deadly serious. Perhaps not as deadly serious as his executioner at the tower, which is what uh, all of those offences would earn you if there were any justice in this world. Which, mind you, there's not. Shame about that, don't you think? So tell me, which leading figures in society would you like to see separated from their heads? Perhaps we could even make a list and compare and see if we're compatible. Augusta enters. Oh, can I play? I already have a list. How now could I be? I don't believe that's the best way to get to know oh. Mr. Brisbane here. <laughs> oh, I believe it's the best way of all. Unless you want to think we should torture the answers out of him, which I'm perfectly capable of doing. She is too. I've seen her. She can put the evil back into medieval if you catch my drift. Miss Augusta, do you not have a dinner to prepare? Inciting a revolution or setting a table? Hmm. Which is more important in the great scheme of things? Miss Augusta! Fine. Back to the kitchen. But heads will roll, I tell you. Heads will roll. Alas, just heads of lettuce for now. Augusta exits. <laughs> All right. So, uh, where were we? Ah! Yes, uh, Mr. Brisbane's most unique background. Sydney, my boy, uh, why don't you tell us all about your time in the Near East? <laughs> that be the East End or the East Anglia? Where is Elbow's Lily? Oh, well, uh, uh, I'm not sure that the ladies would want to hear about all that. Well, I don't know about the ladies, but I sure do. 
Sydney here. <laughs> oh, he was posted with the diplomatic service. Uh, where was it again now? Uh, Mesopotamia, the, the Punjab. Uh, oh, one of those foreign places. Probably more like Newgate Prison. Lily Alberta. So, how many scalp? So, how many scalps did you take? How many what? Or did you just put the natives' heads on spikes? Oh, well. My uncle said you were in the diplomatic corps. Isn't that what diplomacy is all about? Displacing the natives and seizing the lands? Or is it simply wholesale genocide? Oh. Well, I'm not sure that that's appropriate in a time conversation. It would be if we were cannibals. Are you a cannibal, Sydney? What? No, I'm not a cannibal. Oh, too bad. I'd like to meet a cannibal. There's so much I've always wanted to know, like... Which tastes better, fingers or toes? Right, perhaps we should just change the subject now. <clears throat> I agree. What shall it be? Politics or religion? Or perhaps both? Always a safe subject, don't you think? Uh, I agree, quite fascinating. See, he agrees. Let's talk about witches. There's always a good topic for conversation. How do you feel about witches? <laughs> I can't say I've ever thought very much about witches. Oh, well, that's a mistake right there. One must always think about witches. Don't you know they could turn you into a toad? Do you want to be a toad? I'd rather not be a toad. That's probably what all the toads say. are thinking, too. Do you think I'm a witch? But how did we get onto this? Oh, I, I wouldn't have any idea. So what about Miss Augusta? Because I know she has a broom. That's evidence of something right there. Might even be evidence of witchcraft. Augusta enters. I wish I had a pitchfork. Hard to storm the government buildings with just a broom. Uh, Augusta exits. What about Rose and Lily here? Do you think either one of them are witches? Oh, well, I... Because if so, we could go out after dinner and burn one of them at the stake. Hey! Where's Elbow's Lily? Wouldn't that be a delightful way to end the evening? I think that would be a delightful way to end the evening. The crackling flames, the horrific screams, the satisfaction that we had to rid the world of demonic power. We could even roast marshmallows. I love impaling them on little sticks, don't you? Uh, are you talking about the marshmallows? Oh, or I the like witches? the way you think. I'm not sure I do. Lily elbows Rose. Right, well that's wonderful. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? You two think a lot. So much in common. <laughs> a little too much, actually. Augusta enters. Dinner is served. Are there any toads involved? Not tonight. Perhaps with dessert then. Right, well, uh, uh, after you, uh, ladies. Everyone makes their way to the dinner table. Calliope, Rose and Lily whisper to one another. What is going on here? I haven't terrified him yet. He's not who you think he is. Is that who I think it is? So who is he then? Lord Havelock interrupts. Certainly, why don't you sit here? Uh, that way you'll be across from uh, Calliope. <laughs> That's good. That way you can kick him under the table. I like kicking people. Oh, Calliope. <laughs> oh, she's such a kidder. Aren't you a kidder? <laughs> kidder or a kicker? <laughs> <laughs> Calliope kicks Sydney. Ow! I want to figure something out. But what? I don't know. Augusta stands off to the side and awaits instruction. Everybody got what they need? Good. I'll just stand over here and work on my manifesto. I'm sorry, but I seem to have lost my glasses. I didn't know you had... I didn't know you wore glasses. Rose elbows Lily. You're right. They're not on your head, or your face, or your eyes, or wherever they were. Uh, Mr. Brisbane, would you be so good as to help me look for them? I can't see a thing without them. Uh, well, um, actually, uh... See, what a gentleman he is, helping the governess find her glasses. Rose groups wildly around the room. Well, go on, help her. The sooner she finds her glasses, the sooner we can get on with things. Right course. Sydney goes to help Rose find her glasses. Besides, I don't want to step on them later and mess up the carpet. Those things are expensive to replace. 
Uh, Rose grabs Sydney and whispers to him. What are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm helping you find your glasses. I don't wear glasses, you fool. I mean, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. We're passing ourselves off as governesses. What are you doing? I'm passing myself off as mine and nobility. And the name. I've gone off my map of Australia. I didn't even know you could read. Sometimes I surprise myself too. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, fourth. I thought the fifth would be a bit too pretentious. Good to know. You have some modesty about you, Horace. Shh! It's Sydney now. Just go along with this and I'll cut you in on the action. What kind of action? How much are we talking about? How are you doing over there? Do you need any help? If so, I can ask Miss Augusta to crawl round on her hands and knees. No, that's fine. We're almost there. Good, because I'm over here plotting world revolution. So, what's your angle? What are you trying to do here? The old man promised me a considerable dowry if I agree to marry her. Oh, he did, did he? So, you're really going to marry her? Don't be ridiculous. She's completely daft. I just want to get the dowry. I'll take the money, then ditch her. How are you going to do that? I'm not sure yet. Perhaps I'll run off to North America and live like a king. So nothing she does tonight is going to scare you off? Oh, I lost me a bit. No. Ah, don't be ridiculous. Have I ever been scared of anything? Remember that time at the orphanage when the headmaster threatened to whip us all for complaining about the small portions at dinner? And you volunteered to get it for him and he'd spare you from the punishment. I did bring the whip. Cut up it in about a dozen little pieces. <laughs> it's all how you ask the questions. Fine. Rose stands up. Um, we're good now. What about your glasses? I just remembered I left them in my room. <laughs> I'll be fine, as long as the portions are big enough for me to see. Rose casts a side, side eye at Sly. After you. Rose and Sydney return to their seats. Rose whispers to Lily. This isn't going to end well. So what's a he? Rose elbows Lily. So, uh, shall we have a word of prayer? To which pagan deity are we sacrificing this week? The one that looks like a goat or the one that only eats goats? Or perhaps we can just consider the food blessed already. <laughs> I miss the one that required human sacrifices. Uh, you were right, Lord Havelock. Your niece is quite charming. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone quite like her. Calliope kicks Sydney again. Hey, buddy, I'm over here. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, heavens, do you like her? Oh, please tell me that you like her. Oh. I'm more than like her. In fact, I think I'm passionately in love with her. You are? What is me? That was fast. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Calliope, I ask for your hand in marriage. Lord Havelock jumps up. She accepts. Right there, it's done. All we need to do is set the date. Miss Augusta, why don't you go fetch the vicar? Perhaps uh, we can wrap this up this evening before young Mr. Melbourne here changes his mind. Or is it Mr. Brisbane? Augusta stays in place. Oh, I'm not going to change my mind. I have my heart set on Miss Calliope here. You have your heart set on Lord Havilet's wallet is more like it. Can he do this? Is that it? Is, is it all done? Oh, it's all done. Young love is such a beautiful thing. Miss Augusta, the vicar, quickly. No, uh, there's something you must know. That's right. There's something you must know. There is. I, I mean, there is. His name's not Sydney. It's Horace. Horace Fish Throttle. Wait, you're babbling, girl. I don't care what his name is. He's not a nobleman at all. He's an orphan from Cheapside. He's just passing himself as a nobleman. Honestly, I don't care about that either. I just know that I'm off... <laughs> that I'm about to marry off my niece. That, for frankly, any man will do as long as he can mark X on the marriage certificate. 
Ah, oh, my dear uncle, your concern for my welfare is touching. Yes, yes, I thought so too. <laughs> There's just one tiny little problem. Problem? What kind of problem? I don't see any problem except I can't get my housekeeper to go find the vicar. Religion is the opiate of the people. Should, should I stay down here on my knees? Oh, yes, please. I do so adore seeing a man in a subservient position into a woman for a change. Oh, all right then. <laughs> you see, uncle, my uncle is quite right. He has complete say in whether or and who to who I am married until I turn 21. Indeed. <clears throat> to whom? That's bad language. Did we teach her that? Uh, complete say. Absolute say. There's just one itsy bitsy problem. Itsy bitsy. Does it involve a spider? Oh, I don't like spiders. See, I've already turned 21. What? 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 That, that can't be. I did the math myself. You were born in 18... Can you uh... prove it? Well, of course I can. I mean, there you are. And here this is. Calliope produces a piece of paper. What's that? Could I still be down here? Just stay down. <laughs> All right, but I have no idea what's going on anymore. This is my birth certificate, and it plainly shows that I turned 21 about at the same time as Mr. Brisbane here walked through the door. This so-called Mr. Brisbane. Oh, no, no, but, but this can't be. I remember when you were born. Were you there? Oh, no, but... Well, I was. Yeah, well, I'm sure my late brother sent a letter or a telegram or, or something. Miss Augusta, will you bring me all of my correspondence? Would that include all the bills or just the legal notices? A personal, oh, that's not me. <clears throat> personal letter is hardly going to stand up against any official signed, properly notarized government document, now is it? Well, I mean, no, but I did. So it appears that I am in charge of my own destiny. You still want me down here or what? Oh, go ahead and get up. Good, because that's awfully hard on the knee. Oh, Mr. Brisbane, or whomever you are, I do appreciate your kind offer of marriage. Well, perhaps I should get back down on my knee. The knee drops back down to his knee. But I must regrettably decline your offer. No, no, this can't be happening. Oh, but I'm afraid it is. I'll be going to visit the bank tomorrow to claim my inheritance. No, you can't. You shan't. Oh, but I can and I shall. I'm a free woman now. An old maid. How are you? An old maid. Sounds positively delightful, doesn't it, girls? Sounds good to me. Now I have no idea what you're talking about, but sure! Mr. Brisbane? That fish throttle. You may get up. Oh, thank you. Ugh. And leave. I beg your pardon? Through the door, preferably. If not, my friends here will be happy to chuck you out through the window. Won't you? Absolutely. At first to feet first, does it make a difference? Oh, they wouldn't. Rose and Lily flex their hands as if, as if preparing for combat. Don't bother opening the window. Make a more spectacular crash with it closed. Ground floor or upper story? I'm thinking upper. What about you? Well, maybe they would. I'm going, I'm going. The new exit. <laughs> Oh, I was looking forward to chucking him through the window. And as for you, Uncle? Oh, I'm ruined. I'm ruined. I do see a trip of Africa in someone's future. You do? Oh, yes. A visit to the Great Pyramids of Egypt, a streamer down the Nile. Perhaps even a hike to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Hadn't even thought about Mount Kilimanjaro. There are there animals to be hunted down on Mount Kilimanjaro? Oh, I don't know. But I'll be sure to let you know when we find it. Well, I don't understand. Of course you don't. You poor man. I'll be leaving tomorrow, taking my fortune with me, and on an, on the, on an around world trip with my two governesses. Will accompany me, won't you girls? What? Us? Sure. My, my, my bills, my, my creditors, however will I pay them? I have an idea. You do? 
Seems Miss Calliope here has lots of ideas. You could get a job. A job? You, you mean it's in work? Wait. If he's a worker, does that mean he's part of the working class now? Because I don't think he and I are on the same side in the class struggle. I was thinking perhaps something with a lot of exotic animals. Oh. Oh, well, I do love exotic animals. Perhaps even a zoo. You want me to work in a zoo? Oh, I'm sure they have lots of work for people willing to clean up after the animals. I'd even be willing to write you a letter of recommendation. In fact, perhaps I already have. Calliope hands a letter to Lord Havelot. No. No! no. Ah. Yeah. no. Well, that was unexpected. What just happened? Let me guess. Those were all forgeries, right? Complete forgery. But very nice calligraphy work, don't you think? Very nice. So I think we should get going, don't you think? I'll take some time to work up passports for you two. What about me? Do I get to go on this world tour? I suppose you could, if you wanted to be a servant. Or you could stay here as Lady of Dweebly Manor. Lady of Dweebly Manor? Or would that be Comrade of Dweebly, Dweebly Manor? Let me know in the morning. To Africa! To Africa! To Africa! <laughs> Calliope Rose and Lily exit. Hmm. Maybe that whole workers' revelation is overrated after all. Augusta tosses her manifesto aside and sits down at the head of the table. Not bad. Not bad at all. Augusta raises a toast. Long live the Queen. Long live the revolution. Best to cover both bases. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks, that was fun. That was Thanks. a lot of fun. Thanks for inviting us. That was a bit of, like, you know, something to do on your Saturday. It is Saturday, right? I don't know what day it is anymore. <laughs> it is a Saturday. <laughs> Saturday here. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Happy Anzac Day, everybody. Happy Anzac Day. Happy Anzac Day. Thanks, Dee. Oh, thank you so much for inviting us all. It's been a bit of fun. Yeah.